In this session, we are going to talk about cardiomegaly or heart enlargement. First, we will start with atrial hypertrophies. Cardiomegaly or hypertrophy enlargement involves at least two types of enlargement. One is called dilation. Dilation occurs as a result of volume overload where the chamber dilates to accommodate increased blood volume. This is happening in congestive heart failure. Another type that is called hypertrophy when the muscular wall of the chamber becomes thicker than normal and the fibers enlarging and the muscle be stronger. Such happening in, for example, since atria dilate more than the hypertrophy, physicians refer to atrial enlargement, whereas when referring to the ventricles, ventricle hypertrophy is predominant. Indicators of enlargement or hypertrophy include an increase in duration of the waveform, an increase in the amplitude of the waveform, axis deviation and changes of the depolarization. Enlargement associated with estria usually can be diagnosed based on the P-wave morphology. A hypertrophy that associated with ventricles should be diagnosed based on the QRS complex changes. How the normal activation of the atrium occurs? In the SA node, the impulse first activates the right atrium and a little bit later, the left atrium is depolarized. This is why this two depolarization wave that pointing first to the right and pointing to the left. This is why in V1, we do have a biphasic curve. The first phase represents the right atrium, while the second one, the left atrium. When we're looking at the lead number two, first the right atrium starts earlier, and of course, because this depolarization wave goes toward the electrode, we will detect a positive deflection and round positive deflection. And the left atrium that starts a little bit later and ending a little bit later, that represents the left atrium. Of course, what we do see, this curve, the sum of these two depolarization wave and the duration that should not be bigger than 0.1 second and the amplitude should not be bigger than 2.5 millimeters. When right atrial enlargement occurs, the right side is getting bigger, is dilated as well. So the right vector, the deposition wave, lasts longer and the amplitude be bigger. So in V1, the first phase be taller and wider. The second part, the left atrium, is normal as before. As you see here, the first phase bigger one and the second one the same. In lead number two, the first part is be wider and taller. Why? The next part, the left part, that start later and ending a little bit later, that's be smaller. The cover curve, it won't be wider because the right atrium that start to depolarize earlier are now a little bit wider, but little gap between the left and the right can somehow mimic or can hide this enlargement. So if we're looking at right atrial hypertrophy, in lead number two, the base is narrow, less than 0.1 second. The amplitude, however, is bigger than two and a half millimeters. This is called P pulmonale. When we are looking at the axis of the atrial activation, this is shifting toward the right one. So this atrial axis can be bigger than plus. Looking at the next ECG tracing, that's rhythmic. The heart rate is around 80. We do have P wave, regularly coming P wave, every P followed by QRS. The PR interval is normal. If we are looking at, however, the morphology of the P in lead number two, that's large, tall, the base normal. Looking at V1, the initial phase is bigger one, 
and the amplitude is bigger than one millimeter. So let's suppose that this is a right atrial enlargement, what is called P pulmonale. The QRS is narrow, axis, however, is right deviated, possible it's around 100 degrees or so, so it can be extreme right deviation, and nothing else can be seen on this tracing. The left atrial enlargement is called P mitrale, because usually mitral stenosis causes this uh, phenomenon. Uh, the right atrial depolarization is normal, so the initial phase in V1 is normal. However, the left atrial depolarization that lasts longer, and the negative parts is deeper than one millimeter and wider, while in lead number two, the right atrial depolarization is normal. The left depolarization that lasts longer and bigger, and now the cover that we do have the sum of these two curves is uh, notched, and the difference between this notching, the, this is a peak, is more than one millimeter. So the duration is wider than 100 milliseconds. The amplitude is still two and a half millimeters, is not wider. And in V1, the second phase, wider and deeper. The axis of the atrial depolarization is left shifted. It can be uh, left deviated, so it can be minus 10, minus 20 or so. The most common cause of left atrial hypertrophy include valvular heart diseases, hypertensive heart diseases, cardiomyopathies, and ischemic heart diseases. It's very important to note that in ischemic heart diseases may produce wide P wave without left atrial enlargement. If you want to summarize the clinical sign or ECG sign of the P mitrale, first of all, in lead number two, very nicely can be seen that the P wave is wider one and it's notched, and the two peaks least is more than one millimeter the distance between these two peaks and in V1 the terminal phase is wider than one millimeter and deeper than one. Looking at this tracing this is mostly rhythmic however we do have a ventricle premature bit. We do have P wave in front of every Q RSS. This Q wave however is wider and nudged in lead number two that's the distance between these two peaks is more than one millimeter in v1 that's biphasic and the terminal phase is deeper and wider than one millimeter the rate it's about when we want to calculate it's around 60 70 per minute bit per minute the pr interval is longer the axis is extremely left deviated, it's around minus 60 uh, degree. If we are looking at pathologic for pathologic Q wave, we do see two, three AVF and V1, V2, V3, QS complex, V4. The little R occurs in V5 and in V6. So the R propagation is very poor one. So that can represent an old inferior and old anterior MI. We can have biatrial enlargement when both sides, the right and the left, enlarged. In this case, we do have both criteria, both for right and the left, be true for the presented ECG, the same ECGs. So meaning that in lead number two, we do have taller one and nudged P wave, Why in V1, both the initial and the terminal phase is deeper and the old is wide. As in the next ECG, this is rhythmic. The heart rate around uh, 80 bit per minute. We do have sinus impulse formation. However, as you see here, tall and wide P wave, and in V1, 
both the initial and the terminal phase is bigger one PR interval is longer QRS is narrow the axis is deviated to the left it's around 110 degrees and pathological Q wave in there, there are no pathologic Q waves in V1 we do have the RSR pattern the QRS is not wider so that's a incomplete right bundle branch block plus when we do have a pathological right deviation this means that's a bifascicular block because the right bundle branch block together with the left posterior hemi block looking at the size of the R wave in V5 this is more than 25 millimeters so that can be due to left ventricle hypertrophy as well we will discuss later on 